Welcome to RC Pilot on TV. I'm Don Stigall. This video is about Warbird racing and engine selection for the Warbirds. Here I have a Spitfire 40 by the World Models and a Strega 40. And even though they have the 40 on them, these are designed for much more powerful engines. This is the YS-115FZ Warbird Special. It has supercharging in the crankcase and it has a chamber for the incoming fuel and air mixture. I have a straight exhaust on it. It comes with a just a, a pipe header that's threaded to fit in it but I need to be able to run a muffler on this engine to be able to fly it at some of the local clubs. This is the engine that a lot of people are using on these two planes. Richard Verano of YS helped in the design of these airplanes. The Warbird Nationals that were held at Muncie in 2016 and 2017 use a wing area to engine displacement chart. And for the wing area of these planes, the maximum four stroke is a 1.29. The maximum two stroke is a 0.95. I like this YS engine, but I'm also a fan of two stroke engines. I have an OS 95 AX. I'll get it out and show what it looks like and show how it fits on the plane. I also have an Evolution 15GX2. It's a 15cc engine, which is 0.91 in inches. These engines have gotten a good reputation and they are economical to operate. And I need to practice. I need to practice a lot. So I'm probably going to put this engine in one of these planes. I was going to make my color tile my gold plane. I don't know that this engine will be a gold engine. It may only be a silver class engine. It'll certainly be very competitive in bronze, if nothing else. Um, and I've gotten a couple of mufflers from Jet that fit the OS9195 mounting pattern and the Evolution shares that same mounting pattern. This is a shorter pipe it's designed for higher RPM. I really don't think it'll be useful, but if the engine performs well, I will try the Jet muffler on it and see if I get a boost. <clears throat> you have a manual. <clears throat> the muffler looks to be improved from the first version of the muffler. The first version of the muffler had a screw through it and it had a pressure fitting and they were coming apart. And it looks like evolution address that when they added the pumped carb to this engine. So you can see it's got a place for a diaphragm and it's got a linkage from the crankcase up to the carburetor which I'm sure provides the pressure for the pumping action. And like I said, the jet mufflers
So here's the engine with the jet, jet stream muffler on it. And one of the things you'll see on this engine is you have a lead and a magnet for the timing. The It comes with a clunk and fuel line that are made for gasoline. You can't use a, a stopper designed for, for um, nitro in a gasoline fuel system. This is the ignition box. Just snaps onto the spark plug and it has a lead to go to the timing sensor. It has a tachometer out and it has a power connector. They also include a spectrum telemetry sensor and you can use these telemetry sensors with other ignition boxes. So if you want to get in-air RPM information, you can do so pretty easily. So let's see how the engine fits on the Strega. With the mount in the all the way out position, it fits just fine. And the muffler has plenty of clearance. On the Spitfire, I have some vinyl graphics that I'm in the process of putting on. And we put this in here. And with the mount all the way at the widest position, it fits fine. And the muffler fits fine. So this engine will fit on these airplanes. It's a heavier engine, but these airplanes were designed for heavier engines up front. As a matter of fact, these engines are a little lighter than the uh, YS-115, so I may have to add a little bit of weight up front. That won't be a problem. I originally got the Evolution 20cc, but it was too big for these airplanes, and I got the 15 instead. I'm looking forward to getting it on my telemetry test stand and seeing how it runs. I'll do the break-in, and then I'll start to push it some. I'll do the break-in with a stock muffler to get a baseline, and once it's broken in, and running well, then I'll try the jet muffler. I have a whole wide range of props from 12 to 14 inches and a variety of pitches in, in pylon versions and in standard versions. So <clears throat> I'll be doing a lot of testing before the engine actually goes on the plane. Here's the engine on the PSP test stand. There are no areas where there's blockage. There's plenty of room for the throttle arm. So I don't have to worry about setting up the engine on the test stand. It does not have a choke. So I won't be hooking up the choke servo. And I need to make a tank with 332nd inch gasoline fuel line because the tank I have is set up for an eighth inch uh, fuel inlet, and this uses the smaller 
standard size for this size of an engine. So I've got to make a tank before I can run it on the test stand. It's going to be interesting to see how a gasoline two-stroke performs with the electronic ignition. And it'll be interesting to see if there's any power gain from the jet muffler versus the stock muffler. This other jet muffler has about the same area of uh, internal volume and even though it may not boost it much, it may boost it a little bit. So I'm going to be doing a lot of running of engines and I'm going to be doing a lot of building. Even though Warbirds are not going to be raced at the 2018 Pylon Nats in Muncie, Indiana, I'm going to try to make some RC Pro Warbird races or some Northern California races this year and next year. So um, I need to get airplanes together, get some practice in, and then go race. These airplanes don't have to be raced. They're fine as sport planes. And they're versatile because they're strong and you can overpower them. They were designed for racing. So the next time you see this engine in a video, it'll be on the test stand and I hope to be breaking it in.